Hi guys, welcome to another episode of our tutorials. Um, this month I want to talk about um, kick drums and I want to try, or actually not just kick drums, I want to talk about making drums, making basic synth drums using kick2 and serum. We're going to start with kick drums. Um, and I want to do it slightly differently than some of my other videos. Uh, the other videos I try to sort of get across these concepts to sort of light up your brain a little bit and get you inspired, which I love doing. But here I'm going to try and be a little bit more practical and actually show you some things about the plugins at the same time. So um, you should probably, you need some good bass monitoring for this if we're going to be working on kicks or headphones with good bass response because a lot of it will, you know, happen in the low end. Um, uh, I'm going to start with kick two, make a kick drum in there, and then we're going to do the same thing in Serum, and then I th if we have some more time, we'll make some basic a basic snare as well in Serum, just to sh <clears throat> show you some of my workflow. So let's start with kick two. This is just the basic standard preset, sort of uh, EDM 2010 kick. Um, as you can hear, it's uh, very clicky and it sounds almost like uh, like it's a synth playing a bass note because it's very stable. The low end is just, you know, a G sharp, as you can see here, this whole part. Now, important to note is that this graph doesn't um, correspond to the waveform literally. Uh, I'll show you because if, if this whole part, this section here is staying, is, is at 400 hertz or whatever, you see, that's that part of the kick. So don't be fooled into thinking that this actually literally corresponds. It's It doesn't. Not even when you move this slider, which is a really useful slider for changing the overall time of the whole thing. But the, even with this, the corresponding uh, sort of relatively, relativity stays the same. See? It doesn't change. So that's an important thing to note. It's kind of... Uh, cumbersome in a way or it, it's it, it makes it hard to really know what you're doing but as usual you just have to use your ears um, uh, for that uh, and um, some other things that I think I that I do I usually turn off this click I, I use these click things sometimes these samplers but for this kick and for most kicks I, I probably won't so now I've changed the sound already but look that was a click. So it's a very loud click. Now, that's all great, you know, a click good for the mix and everything, good to have presence in the mix. But if you overdo it, it makes your kick sound horrible. And this click is just, you know, a click. It doesn't come from this. And I like making a click that actually comes from these, this sine wave and therefore gives the whole thing a more analog and real physical sound. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, look at this graph on the standard kick. This doesn't actually even start at the very start. So what happens if we mute the click and bring this all the way back here? Hey, there's our click. But it's a very, you know, very sort of super clean cl click that doesn't sound much like a kick drum, but you can it is much more flexible. You can now tune it. So this guy starts all the way at 17 kilohertz. If you drag this down, see it's like moving a low-pass filter or an EQ, but without a low-pass filter or an EQ. This is the actual sine wave. And changing the curvature of this, I guess, you know, you don't move this guy, but you can move this thing, which is very useful. So, see? These things make a ton of difference because this very first part is going to tell is going to be the only stuff that sits in the higher region and it's going to give your brain a lot of information about the tonality of the kick and is making your brain try to place it in the song. Um, so I like running this live for quite a while uh, because then you can uh, tweak this tonality for quite a while and depending on the sections in the song and depending on, on the other elements, whether you want a lot of click or not, uh, whether you want a very clear fundamental or not. Um, 
for example, doing a kick like this can be quite cool. Not not uh, not with this. Uh, um, I don't mean with this kind of a, a really long long kick with lots of. But say say something like this. Um, uh, if you sidechain to a kick like this without a very loud click, you will get an extra added sort of sucking effect because the kick kills the, uh, all the other elements, so it goes very quiet, and there's no click to take the place, it's only the low end, so you get this really extreme uh, sidechain ducking effect, which a couple of, you know, it's, it's a hip-hop thing, it's, but it's also in drum and bass, there's more people doing it right now. Um, so that's an interesting way to make something more intense while you're actually removing... So you're removing high end from the kick to make the track dynamics more intense. Um, and I generally, as a kind of rule, try to, with a sign, clean sine wave kick like this, try to get away with making the click as small as possible. Because if it's still present and you can still hear the click, but it's not as it's quiet as it can be, the rest of the kick will sound much bigger and the mix will sound much bigger. Because something like this, like a very loud... Uh, blip like that can dwarf your entire mix because nothing uh, can be as loud as this across the spectrum uh, in a transient like this made out of a sine wave. There's nothing that can beat this for loudness and for punchiness. So if you have synths with a lot of high ends and high end and hi hats and stuff, this is still going to cut through all of that, and that's cool. Like if you want that sort of EDM sound from um, 10 years ago then that's cool or maybe it'll come back or whatever but i find that if you have a kick like this it's gonna it's it's di more difficult to mix with because it's so full spectrum i used to love doing and mixing everything as full spectrum as possible but you know think about it it's a kick drum you want it to mostly feel it in the low end and uh, and have have all the presence there and you don't want the kick drum to already take up the whole spectrum before anything else or well, maybe you do but um what i like doing is like i said is making it a little bit smaller and trying to make the presence uh the rest of the presence work more because this can also kind of be kind of be a stop gap this click uh for the whole uh for for like lack of presence in the rest of the kick so if you go back to the to the preset so if we get rid of the click, like this is, this doesn't have much presence. It's just, it's almost like a 808 sine wave, you know, just playing a G. See, it's not far removed from just being a very, like a subby. So that doesn't have a, that doesn't feel like it has much of a transient, much of a knock. So, but if you add this click to it, now it's like no but it's it's got a lot of no it doesn't maybe in the mix yeah maybe some ways you can make that work but you know what i mean this that high click is so present that you kind of lose um the ability to to judge whether the rest of the the mids and the high bass are, are doing anything so uh let's get rid of the click a little bit or let's make it sit in a slightly cooler area and let's make it all a little bit shorter. So uh, a couple of things that are funny about this plugin. Um, this EQ is a real EQ. <laughs> like it has, you know, this screen, which I hadn't found for a while until I tried to use this button. So EQ is on, right? This I don't use this EQ normally, but I was playing with this with the with the with the default preset. It's like, all right, cool, EQ. That works. Let's add some high mid. Huh? What? And then it was like, oh, maybe I have to edit. So then it turns out that here you have to turn on this pole. And then you can EQ. Kind of strange, but um, maybe it's for CPU saving or something. I don't really use this, but use it if you want. Be creative with it. This distortion is kind of interesting. Let's turn all that off for now, though, just to go pure sine wave. This compressor is... Um, I haven't used it, but this render button is kind of nice. So say you have... Say you're kind of happy with this kick, 
then you can generate it in here and then just drag it, boom, into your sequencer. And there's the kick. Which is handy if you want to consolidate, you know, and you want to want everything to be audio so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, now these click generators, they're basically samplers with pitch, length, blah, blah, and they have their own envelope, which is very useful uh, for making other sounds and kicks. Sub here, you can set it to follow pitch, all of these, but for the kick, it's obviously handy. Velocity here, which is only level, but works. You can add harmonics, but as you can see, if I add these, the way the phases of the harmonics are lined up are not really the way I like to work with them. If you see my harmonics tutorial, you know what I'm talking about. You can't set the phase of these harmonics, so I don't use this a lot, but it can definitely be useful. Also, there's always a limiter on. Now, because this guy is sitting, what is it, pretty much at zero? No, almost at zero. Can I set it to... Well, anyway, the limiter is not doing anything, but the, the, the default preset, with a click, it's going into the red, and so it had the limiter on. Now, I don't like that. I don't want to necessarily limit. I don't know that limiter. <laughs> I don't know that limiter. Um, I don't want it. So... I try to just work with the sine wave in simple, uh, simple squ uh, level like this, easiest starting point. Because now you won't have anything necessarily sticking out in your mix or hitting your limiter if you're sidechaining with it. Um, so that's kind of uh, some of the other features in here. One thing that's really important when you start messing with this guy, this pitch thing, is if you have a very short envelope, like it's kind of difficult to get this not to click at the start at the end of it especially on headphones you can hear it quite well and if you move this it doesn't change the whole thing it only changes the pitch of the sine wave going through it so it can give you pops and sometimes when you're in the mix you'll be moving this to tune it differently to see what happens and that's very useful but then i always afterwards try to go in and correct it but the thing is this, like like you can see, this doesn't correspond with, with the audio here. It corresponds with the audio there. So if you're, if you're changing the pitch, that changes even more. So now this corresponds with something. Now it corresponds with the same, same spot, but it just feels even more awkward to me anyway. Because, well, because it does. 